Welcome, my dear students and any others who happen to have accidentally stumbled across this video to my continuing coverage of Chapter 8's discussion on basic concepts of chemical bonding. To begin this lecture, I would like to share with you another hilarious chemistry cat of the day taken from quickmeme.com. This one says, Argon walks into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve noble gases here. Argon doesn't react. <laughs> ha ha ha! Chemistry. All right. For this one, I need to do a quick review of electronegativity. But what in the world is that? Well, as we've discussed in an earlier chapter linked to floating over my head or in the description beneath this video, electronegativity is an element's thirst for electrons. The Born element wants to steal electrons to feel like a noble gas, that is to gain a full octet, the more electronegative that element is. Now on the periodic table, the general trend for electronegativity is that it increases as you go up and to the right on the periodic table, excluding the noble gases. Thus, the most electronegative element is fluorine way up here in the upper right hand corner and the least is francium way down on the opposite end. Now, this dovetails beautifully into our next topic, polarity. You see, when two bonded atoms in a covalent molecule, that is a molecule between all non-metals, have an electronegativity difference between them, the more electronegative one will hog electrons to itself. Like this, you see hydrogen and chlorine are bonded together. Chlorine is much more electronegative, hence it hogs those shared electrons towards itself giving it a strong partial negative charge and the hydrogen a strong partial positive charge. Now just so you know, this is different from ionic compounds because in ionic compounds where you have metals and non-metals bonded to each other, the metal essentially gives its electron to the non-metal which receives or takes it. Those are situations in which you actually have full on plus and negative charges. That's not what we have here. This is between all non-metals, so it's technically a molecular compound with a covalent, not an ionic bond. This is a sharing of electrons. Nevertheless, the sharing can sometimes be uneven if you have one atom being much more electronegative than the other. Make sense? So this particular situation, as you can see, forms a partial positive on the hydrogen and a partial negative on the chlorine. This partial charge difference or uneven sharing of electrons is called a dipole. Now covalent molecules with dipoles are called polar molecules. The degree of uneven sharing of electrons between two atoms is called polarity. So polarity really is an uneven sharing of electrons. The greater the difference in electronegativity, the more polar the bond is. So these three dimensional or actually two dimensional attempts at conveying three dimensionality, three dimensional reality, Pictures show charge distributions in three different molecules. Redder parts of the molecules have more electron density, that is a stronger partial negative charge, whereas bluer ones show less electron density, that is a stronger partial positive charge. And as you can see in the case of F2 with two fluorine atoms, because both Fs are equally electronegative, there's no blue or red anywhere. The sharing of the electrons is completely even. Over here we have hydrogen bonded to fluorine, where there's a huge electronegativity difference. Thus, all of the elect most of the electron density ends up on the fluorine with its partial negative and partial positive on the hydrogen. In the case of lithium fluoride, that is an ionic compound in which there's essentially a complete give of electron to the fluoride from the lithium. So ionic compounds are so polar that they fall into a completely different category, ionic. All right then, we measure polarity, the uneven sharing of electrons in units called Debye's or Debye's or Debye's, depending on how you want to pronounce them. I like pronouncing it Debye's because they remind me of the snack cakes. So the greater the polarity, the larger the number of Debye's. We can say then that bonds with dipoles, that is an uneven sharing of electrons, have dipole moments. We can even draw electron sharing in two different ways, one like this, and one like this, representing most of the electron density leaning towards the fluorine in this case. That takes us then to a beautiful chapter problem. I want you to arrange each of the following individual sets of bonds in order of increasing polarity from least polar bond to most polar bond. Now, I'm not gonna do this for you, but I give you a piece of advice. You might want to look up actual electronegativity numbers for each of the atoms shown here. The larger the difference in the electronegativities between the two bonded atoms, for example, between the carbon and the fluorine, or this carbon and the sulfur, the more polar that bond will be. That takes us to the end of this video. Thank you, my dear students. Please have an enjoyable rest of your day.